Welcome to your favorite comic book channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. We're a daily comic book channel here on the tubes, and uh, we've got more than a thousand videos live to date, uh, so we might have talked about your favorite comics. Hit the little magnifying glass on the Cartoonist Kayfabe front page here on YouTube. Give it a search for your favorite comics. Maybe we talked about your favorite stuff. Maybe we didn't. If we didn't, uh, put something in the comments and let us know what we need to put at the top of our reading list for future episodes. We have a Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon. Uh, the King Kayfabers on the Patreon mitigate the Kayfabe effect. When we uh, show off the books that we talk about, uh, thousands of people see these videos very rapidly, and lots of them go hunting on eBay and Amazon for the cheapest copies. So uh, if you get the videos before anybody else, that gives you a a little bit of an advantage. Jimmy, Jimmy and I are going to be at uh, the Baltimore Comic Con coming up uh, in a couple of weeks as of this recording. It's going to be September 8th, 9th, 10th. Uh, it's the birthplace of Cartoonist Kayfabe, and we look forward to seeing you there. Without further ado, it came uh, just as you left. Last record session, Jimmy. You left, and then uh, the UPS guy came, or whatever. Michael Golden's Marvel Stories Artist Edition. Uh, they use the nomenclature artist edition for everything now, mm -hmm. but uh, in days of yore, it would have been called an artisan edition or artifact edition, I believe, uh, which is to say that it's a smattering of pages, no no complete stories or or anything like this. Uh, it might have the Spider-Man Hulk story incomplete. Uh, off the bat, this cover would be, uh, this is from the X-Men Companion published by Fantagraphics uh, when they did two volumes to kind of like... Uh, you know, they didn't want to publish superhero comics, but they would do a super adjacent uh, companion book and make lots of money. It strikes me how much Art Adams resembles this cover. And he art. admits it. Yeah, Art Adams completely admits to pulling from uh, Michael Golden in a big, giant way. Uh, always look forward to the end papers yes. on artist editions, and uh, both choices of end papers are pretty good here. Very iconic shot from the uh, introduction of... Uh, rogue issue of uh yeah it's of, an uh, amazing Avengers. amazing piece let's jump into things man this video is brought to you by the cartoonist kayfabe patreon three different levels will give you access to our videos early and at the king kayfabe level you'll get access to all of our videos first to offset the kayfabe effect and you sit in on the recording session which really gives you a leg up we are also working cartoonists. The best way to support cartoonist Kayfabe is to buy our comics. And coming out in time for Christmas, Hip Hop Family Tree from Ed Piscor. 500 plus pages collecting all of the Hip Hop Family Tree in one handsome volume, along with 140 pages of extra back material, notes, art that hasn't been reprinted before, new art created just for this volume. Red Room, Crypto Killers, is the latest series in the Red Room uh, universe. There are two volumes in trade paperback, and this third volume is being published right now. Issue three recently published features Latchkey Kids, now known as Switchblade Shorties, which is Ed's ongoing daily comic strip. This is the first appearance, so you may want to add this one to your collection as a, uh, a key back issue. X-Men Grand Design is going to be collecting all three volumes into one edition, also in time for the holidays this year, uh, the X-Men Grand Design Trilogy. You can pre-order that one now. My latest comics, True Crime Funnies, self-published, featuring three non-fiction stories, including two wrestling stories, available on my website or my Patreon, young adult graphic novel, The Plain Janes. Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive, featuring the homeless ninja on a skateboard, collecting eight complete stories. This is my action superhero series, and a new volume of Street Angel will be due out later this year in November, also from Image Comics. Get Princess of Poverty and Deadliest Girl Alive to have all of the Street Angel comics, and Hulk Grand Design, my contribution to the Grand Design mythos celebrating 60 years of the Incredible Hulk. And now back to the video. Boy, we're spoiled with these things. I, I did. Uh, we got the Avengers Annual, Doctor Strange artwork, uh, Marvel fanfare stuff, which would include the uh, Spider-Man joint, pages from the NOM. Excellent. And here's your end pages. Interesting, uh, kind of a big panel. There, you know, like usually you see something really small like this size blown up. In this case, a much larger piece, which is wild. And it speaks to the level of detail that is kind of a characteristic of Michael Golden. Yeah, man. This guy, he's a noodler, and these kind of marks you just did not see mm -mm. in comics at this time period. Uh, we're not getting, like, it's the DC stuff that 
got him on people's radars to start, you know. And of course, this is just all Marvel things, but showed up in Marvel in a big way. He did some things, man. Uh, there is a Micronauts uh, artist edition that uh, I think we looked at with uh, with Tom, and uh, good companion piece for that. Look at the thick and thins going with the form of the leg to sell you on the volume of the shape. Yeah, I really like that. It's kind of a double lighting. Yeah. Great feathering both directions. I always wonder whenever you see somebody putting this amount of detail at a time whenever the comics just did not reproduce it, what incentivizes them to work this detailed? Yeah, I think you don't do it if you unless you can't not do it. Uh, but Michael Golden has always admitted, one, that he is not a comics guy, and two, that comics cannot afford him. It I wonder takes... what he means by not a comics guy. He's done a ton of comics work. That, that, I wonder if that's a bit of a self-effacing thing. Yeah, like, uh, he's, he's the direct opposite of self-effacing. Uh, what I think it actually is, is that air of, like, oh, it's just comics. Like, like he's playing, like, he's into it, but he's pretending like he's not. You know, that, that kind of art shit. That's funny. It, it is the opposite of self-effacing. He's, yeah, like trust comics me. comics are beneath his talent. Exactly. Go, go watch any of his interviews. He, he believes in himself, for sure. And this is, you know, the, the famous introduction of, of Rogue. One of the things that uh, I always make note of, and we do have a Michael Golden uh, playlist here on the channel, is that when he's drawn chaos, it's still all penmanship. So he's not a flickety flick of, of the uh, the white media all over the, the thing. Mm -hmm. He's not going in with a brush and doing weird technique. Every line is drawn by hand and is a, is a considered choice. I look at some of this stuff especially on the monitor, and it's kind of like, is it too much? A colorist nightmare, perhaps? Definitely that, but I mean, like, even as a as a viewer, do you get lost in sure. lots of these moments? Yeah. Like, like, lost meaning I can't discern foreground, background figure. For sure. Yeah, like, did you know that there's a figure there? Or how about a figure right there? You know, like, that's a really chaotic page. Yeah. It takes me a long time to figure out what's happening there. And it does require the colorist to do lots and lots of heavy lifting. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised by that. Jumping into the Doctor Strange stuff that would come come some, some years later, I believe. Does the color hold thing pretty well? This, uh, this Doctor Strange story, like, I have this comic, and it's a beauty. Yeah. It's really sharp stuff. I, I mean, like, this is just magic. You know, no, no pun intended. Still incorporating the Ditkoisms in the Michael Golden style. That's pretty cool, huh? Look how awesome that hand is. Oh, yeah. With radiating lights at the edges. Yeah, the Ditkoisms are really neat because some of these marks do feel almost Ditko-esque. And almost like when Ditko leaves Marvel and he's doing his own black and white stuff. Right. Kind of reminds me of that. Dude, this is fun because uh, it's from Marvel Fanfare, but it was an inventory strip. And that's what Marvel Fanfare began as. Because how can you sit on a Michael Golden story for too long? You gotta, you gotta put that out, man. Man, he's so good with machines and stuff like that. Helicopter's just gorgeous. You know, the other artist edition we've looked at, if you're if you're new to cartoonist kayfabe, is the GI Joe special that he did. Yes, which shows off his ability to draw tech and machines and everything very well. We're gonna see some good examples once we get to the non pages. He is such a stellar drawer yeah it feels like every page has it's that image thing of like having hooks on your pages it right. feels like he's just loaded with those we'll see the jim lee scott williams mm -hmm. team uh kind of handle a lot of female faces in this exact way with these kind of lines and stuff boy tons of these bulging eyeballs using screen tone here to great effect to create foreground background light dark absolutely here's some more ear kludginess yeah, it's wild to me how much that kind of, I don't know, noises together. Yeah. Yeah, it really relies on the on the color. And I don't know if it was meant to be black and white, if he would have drawn it that way. I wonder if there's any pushback against him at this time period, like from old timers or something. Sure. I know that he's this huge influence on the McFarlands. You mentioned Jim Lee and Scott Williams. So like going forward, this guy's huge influence. Right. But I wonder if from the traditional house style, if it was the opposite where guys are like, all that noodling. Yeah, I think he was very sought after. Like, he made his name at DC, and then he was a part of the implosion. And uh, Marvel sucked him up right away, put him to work on Micronauts. We're into the nom, dude. 
which is some of, you know, this is, it's, it's his masterpiece in a lot of ways. Yeah, I love this comic. Look at that, dude, standing on the floor, uh, like, yeah. uh, uh, the horizon line is the bottom of the panel, so you get to see the range of depth. John Beatty pulling inks here. That's the uh, the inker on that Kelly Jones artist edition yeah. you looked at, right? Really, really good inker. Phil Felix doing the color. Uh, so look at this, man, holding lines for uh, serpents and stuff. Phil Felix must not have colored too much, right? No, I don't think so. Wow. By the way, this is his lettering with that 102, by, so give it a close look. These are really stunners. This is that, I, I feel like there are these moments in comics where it's like everybody on the team fits. Yeah. And boy, is this stuff just, for for the stuff that I pointed out and said, it's very noisy. It's hard for me to discern figures and foreground background. I don't have that problem here. Think, and there's still a ton of detail, but it's kind of worked out with the lights and darks and textures. And, you know, it's some, it's five years later, mm -hmm. you know, the guy, the guy has figured some stuff out. Uh, and it's, it's interesting because like, you know, this is nom number five, this is nom number nine. When you read those and you check them out, uh, Golden is inking some of them. Mm -hmm. He's coloring some of them. Uh, you just, you just never know. Always love it whenever he colors. Yeah. Dropping into his, his uh, cover works. Interesting arrangement for the book that the covers are this far up front. Right. I kind of like it. It's, it's a center piece because the Spider-Man Hulk story is going to be in the back. Yeah, I mean, I like breaking it up. I've become more interested in how people lay out a book. <laughs> and this feels a little bit atypical for the artist editions I've seen so far. But not atypical in them putting like a 1980s cover <laughs> uh, after a 1993 cover, <laughs> after a 1996 cover. Like, Jesus Christ, come on, guys. Give us some, some curation here. Yeah, Golden just seems like such a, um, almost ahead of his time in some ways. Like oh, if absolutely. he shows up at, 10 years later, he's probably one of the image founders. Right. And selling, you know, gargantuan stuff. What a great piece. Yeah. There's your joint. I love this issue. Here's a tip for everybody at home. If you have Marvel Fanfare 47 and 3D glasses, the red and blue ones, Give it a look under those glasses. It works. It, not as 3D exactly, but there's something going on with the color. That's cool. It, it's really interesting that way. The coloring in that book is so spectacular. That's the thing. Like, Golden's really smart with color, too. It's a very graphic artist. There's those nom covers, dude. Fantastic. And look at look at the approach, right? Like, because he's probably coloring it. So the these red lines are indicating, like, leave those white. You know, let the background be whatever it is. But, like, leave those white... And then you and then you don't put the black line, and it implies motion a little bit. Look at how fantastic this is! Is like dog fighting scene, but updated to, you know, nineteen eighties, and also Vietnam War. Um, I love the detail on the helicopters with like the painted jaw lines. I'm spectacular. And I'm such a fan of his cartooning, drawing these different kinds of faces. Totally different. Every character on there. So important for the aesthetics of the Nam. Uh, you know, think of any of the Joe Kubert books that that just look grisly you know like at least this has a little life to mm. it man both of these covers wow wow and you remember the color here there's like 100 percent magenta on either the sky or the grass i think you know what's funny is i, I don't know I, i've never seen this cover before yeah i wonder if that's on oh number 42 so much later in the run i guess because uh, it's such a cool composition i was like is that on run he did a lot of this around this like early mid nineties period, man, where, uh, so much background color work with like a strong foreground image. He was an art director. He, he basically, John Romita like left as art director. He became art director. Then John Romita came back. If, if I, if I got my story straight, I was picking these shits up off of the rack. Great color on these things too, man. Yeah. They this pop. is your magentas. Again, he, he was he was like the, the guy who was, was not afraid to use pink. He was fantastic in, in coloring this stuff. Boy, these these were I was also buying these off the rack and, yeah. and like burnt into into my mind some of these covers. Look at how good he is with the the dark and the light, right? This right. is all lit up with the muzzle bursts. Phenomenal. Very thoughtful. He's great at spot at the doing the values, which yeah. is something not all these cartoonists have. The unfortunate thing about this being just Marvel stuff is that like he's doing these covers while he's doing those Batman covers. Yeah, and some of those are my favorite Batman images. Remember scooping this off the rack at, at Kmart? Just just that's that striking image right there, dude, is just unbelievable. 
iconic covers. But still allowing for that cartooning. Yeah, it's funny, you know, like I, I group guys by eras together and stuff. You know, I think of Mike Zeck and Michael Golden as being of a similar era. Right. And it's fun to think of them as both doing this is this is amazing. <laughs> Pretty late period. And we he's not he's not dipping nothing, man, to draw those bullets. Those those are sepia toned micron lines if I've ever seen. I'll tell you what though, they're real shell casings. Right. You think of all the great shell casings of like the Stephen Platt era image. These are real, look like real rifle shells. Yeah, totally. And it actually does not have the lead at the tips. Mm, craziness. But, you know, like, uh, Mike Zeck's such a different artist, and yet great with, you compare Punisher covers between the two. Right. But a totally different approaches. This is, love this Wolverine that he would do, that bulky Wolverine. Yeah. Did a Christmas story. That might even be from it, I'm not sure. But it was that, like, beefed up Wolverine. So awesome. This was this is great. I think texture the insides of these. This is looks a little different to me, like he's inking with a different tool. You know, those legs and stuff, the way he's doing shadows on there looks quite a bit different than the uh left page. Yeah. Yeah, the whole composition is weird. Yeah, it makes me wonder if this was some kind of deadline something or a replacement of maybe a different cover that they cut. Could be. Because it's a it's a very different approach than what you're seeing there, like Holy cow. <laughs> wow. I'd like to see the perspective grid underneath that. Right. Wow. Classic kind of composition there, dude. Out of bullets. Yeah, man. Pack wow. Of attention to detail, huh? A lot of story going on in that one cover image. I'm going to maybe put my head in the camera a little bit because I'm trying to see if that's drawn or not. And I, I really can't tell. I don't see paste up on top of it. Like, I don't see this as being pasted up. It's very instructive to me, the idea that this is drawn, because you rule out some of your straight lines, but then you almost just, like, beat up or ink quickly, you know, to give that that weird effect of, of lit-up windows. Right. What the hell is this jobber title? Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah, no idea. Yeah, I don't know. I was going to say Nova. Yeah. How about the op art there, yeah, I like dude? That. I like Hand that. drawn. That speaks to me. And it's totally fucking with your with your eyes. That's a famous cover. Yeah. He's a weird one because there's wonk to it. Would you agree? She is. Uh, she's very squatty. Like there's no torso. There's no um, abs. Yeah, like she's bent over, like this. Yeah. Which is what he's trying to do, but but. It's, there's there's a weirdness to it. You often encounter that, right? Especially on a cover. Like yeah. there's so the space that you have to work with is so it can be strange. So we're gonna pad it out, dude, with like pinups and like some other ad art and stuff. It's another big Steve Ditko uh homage there. Absolutely. I Love all these pull outs. Because his art at that size that doesn't even make sense to me, the amount of detail, like, in the face and everything there. <laughs> right. It's another one of those where I look at it and think, like, how, why would you do this? Like, what is this? Is this printed as... A, it must be a poster, right? See, I think it's an ad. I think here is, like, Roger Stern, Michael Golden, blah, blah, blah. I think it might even get cropped. I, I, don't, I don't even know. I mean, what a drawing. Wow. Both of these spreads kind of communicates, like, his evolution... Because that, that, that stuff was certainly early 80s. This is probably not far from, like, that Jackie Chan comic era. Some great stuff in there, too. The different scale of those figures. Like, that is such a big... It's neat to see him do an hierarchy where you've got, like, 12 figures on a on a busy composition. Right. And how do you make a couple of them pop? Famous pinup. chain link. Famous pinup. What are we looking at there? Is that white media? Is that some kind of inverted photocopy? Looks like it's drawn. Like, look at the ink on the sides. Right. Where you kind of see. Yeah. That doesn't even look like white media. It looks like, I, it looks like he's drew, he drew it. It looks like he drew it. Wow. That's that's something. <laughs> like, look at how much noise is happening. There. Right. Yeah, dude. This would take me a week to do something like that. <laughs> And it'll take another week to color the damn shit. Yeah, and, and what is it? You know, like like when you get into this, like what, what is it? And stuff in perspective, accurately. 
Yeah, lighting effect on top of all of it. He doesn't really fake shit. You know? I like That's his... a great lady death strike. <laughs> I'm loving that. I'd like to see what that looks like uh, in print. Yeah, I'd be curious to check that out. That might be one I track down to see. Is that some magazine era shit? Howard the Duck? Airbrush. Yeah, Airbrush, wash. but also play, yeah, playing with wash and different textures. That's kind of a cool inclusion. It's a weird choice. I've but... been meaning to pull this this uh, issue. I mean, I have it pulled. But Is I think this it's the Impossible Man issue. to buy a different artist? It might be a whole gang of artists. Yeah, there's one of those X-Men annuals I've been looking at for that reason. And I feel like it is Michael Golden on pencils and then like a cast of good inkers. Generation X joint. It's wild to me that he can go from like a Punisher one figure spectacular to then like, here's 50 elements. Right. Uh, here's that art for that Fantagraphics book. See, it makes sense to me that it's this size. Right. Yeah, beyond 11 by 17. Because it's just... I don't know how you could do that level of... De like, look at the gears and wires and things, like, inside the neck. Yeah, with reasonably accurate light, light, lighting and stuff. Ooh, that's the old Michael Golden signature. Yeah, there's some really neat stuff in this book. <laughs> so, X-Men 273, I was reading at the time. Yeah, we did we did that one uh, episode where there was, like, five artists. And okay, so this uh, is from his... P right, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, see, this is an iconic image because it's on the back of like, a trading card or something. These pages spectacular. I'm so glad they're here. That is amazing. That's a really cool panel. Yeah, man. I feel like uh, Marvel shouldn't even get to own that. Like, what the fuck is it? <laughs> Dude, shell casings yeah, that form, form the, the skull. A little hint at pen pencil. Yeah, I like seeing the pencils. Very tight pencils. I wonder if he always pencils that tightly. This is young. Yeah, 82. But he still was in the game for about five. You know, he's been doing stuff since about 77. Did he do fanzine stuff, do you know? Yeah, I don't know. But but his art feels like fanzine artwork at that early stage, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it feels very different than the house styles, you know, in the 70s. So I feel like that's what you come out of. All right, man. Here's the story, dude. We, did a, whole, we did a whole video on this. And this this right here might be worth the price of admission. Like, look at that gear, dude. Pulls from Wally Wood. Almost uh, almost an homage here to 2001. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Flicking your uh, cigarette up through the air and it turns into the spaceship. Yeah, orbiting. Man. Boy, his lighting. Wow. And he does the great stuff. A lot of saturated colors for these things where right. like, the whole room might be magenta. Right. Like I said, do those red and blue 3D glasses and look at this stuff and you'll be surprised by what it looks like. Very, very sharp. Love this, man. Look at how, like, the edges, like, it's all pen, right? Right. Yeah, like like a marker, like a, like a, uh, whatever the, whatever the f you felt tip shits were at the time. The, What's the, the value the time? of, like, why this isn't black? Right. You know, it's so dark in terms of the hatching. It has to look black in print. This is kind of neat, too. Like, what is that? He does that on all of this stuff. And I wonder if if you're coloring it yourself, I wonder if... Nah, I, I don't know. Because he'll do it super often on this on this story. Like these pages. Love this stuff. Totally. Great oh, tech. Oh, man. Look at... This is a complete cartoon. Absolutely. The way he builds those characters, too, man. Really putting used to those microns, man. Right? That's that's one line. That's a dead line. And he's doing it, and he's making it sing. Doesn't that feel like a boy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a Spider-Man. McGruff the Crime Dog. You remember him? I do. There it is. That's the money shot. I hated that uh, whenever he wore these... Uh... I don't know, Speedo. I don't even know what you call them. However, I would swipe that entire thing and drop it into a wrestling comic. Sure. You have your muscle, your, your powerhouse you, guy your rolling King Kong into the territory. Just so much effort. 
There is also a great contrast between the amount of detail or lack of detail in your foreground Spider-Man versus the background. It's just almost gray with detail. It, it makes it makes Spider-Man pop for sure. I find these kinds of marks like the not a speed line, but whatever they are, trajectory, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I find it really trails. interesting. <laughs> right. <laughs> it reminds me of uh, some of the stuff Quesada would do. Yeah. I wonder if that's where it comes from. But that's a nice spread. Look at the, the schmutz of this building falling down. Yeah. But you look close and you can see like chunks of wall hundreds of individual bricks drawn there yeah yeah it's a chunks of wall and you could see how they're falling by how the bricks are adorned on there this is really cool like stuff like this makes me want to dig out the comic and see yeah. like what's it look like i remember making note when we went through the video like looking at that stuff like holy shit he draws all that by hand whenever they could get some emotion in spider-man's mm -hmm. face you gotta appreciate that I've heard McFarlane talk about Golden. Mm -hmm. It does not look like he took any Spider-Man from Golden. Yeah, no. No, but he took this kind of shit. Yeah. This shit. And maybe that's the key. Maybe, maybe you got to make the superhero your own. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know what he did take from Golden is the, is the uh, spaghetti webbing. Okay, I was thinking that that came from Golden. Yeah. These kind of two-page spreads, man, they're nuts looking. It's so much drawing. Talk about so much drawing. How about that, Jimmy? That's another one I'd be curious about. Let's see the layout of the perspective grid. That's awesome, dude. Like, like having like the path of destruction. Yeah, man. That's a, wow. That's a great... He'll put used to some some tones here and there. It makes sense. It's a black and white photo, so you so you add so you add that stuff in. Do we do this uh, video also? I don't know if we've done this, but this is um, it's I, toys, right? Spoiler. Um, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. I was uh, digging in Florida with Aaron Connolly, and he insisted I buy this comic, and uh, he's not wrong. I love the that that version of of Wolverine, but it was for the story. You know, it's like an anthology book with four or five stories. But this was the reason uh, you need this comic. It's like that great uh, Twilight Zone episode with Cesar Romero. This is, just all of this is awesome. I love these marks. Yeah. That lightning bolt, heavy lightning bolt kind of thing. And there's, there's your toy revelation. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is uh, the magazine era Nom comics, if I'm not mistaken. What are those? Because I always thought the Nom magazine just reprinted the comics in black and white. Savage Tales would would okay. have uh, the the original Nom comics. Love the cloud lines. How about that lighting? Yeah, I wouldn't want to draw that. With like, how about that the inversion? Lighting? Yeah, yeah. Is that like being seen through the blade or just that depth? I don't know if it's that helicopter taken off or if it's another one. Uh, you know, like in the dust up. Yeah, yeah. I think it's multiple copters. She was so good with hardware. It makes me wonder what his court, what his uh, files look like for reference for all that. Larry, kind of Larry Hama was the editor, so I think Larry Hama is a stickler for that kind of stuff. How do you draw that? If this is the size of the original, how do you get in there and draw that? I don't understand it because mm -mm. it's two together. It's not. There's no walk to it. Yeah, it's really good. And also, how great is this effect where like we're drawing people like a second layer of depth? Yeah. It even helped out by the non-archival properties of the ink pen, right? That, like, it just, they faded f first. It's so fantastic that he's able to do this kind of chaos and movement, but also be as tight as he is with the details. And, you know, just like uh, that, that Art Adams uh, Alan Moore comic, I think Michael Golden might letter this, because this is a very different kind of lettering. This ain't Marvel lettering. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty raw. What a what a fucking labor, right? These comics, I think, are remarkable. But imagine putting this effort into stuff if you had scripts where you're like, eh, right. this story's pretty pretty weak. It has to be frustrating for somebody working in that assembly line style, or you just have to divorce yourself from right. it. Right. 
These are great shots, man. He must have had some cool helicopters for reference to be able to draw them from all those angles and have them all look really cool. And, totally. And there's something about whenever you nail the something like a helicopter, when you draw it correctly proportionally, it just feels real. Yeah. This is kind of a strange um, tangent, I think. Right. But man, wow. You know, like, how do you get this shot? Right. I just, I don't know how you come up with that. It looks like you're the company that makes those helicopters and you're staging beautiful photos of them. Yeah, totally. Uh, I think Chaikin, when we got dinner, when he was here in Pittsburgh, said that Michael Golden has a kind of like a photographic memory kind of thing. Man, and that's amazing what the helicopter crashed on its side. How about these textures of depth where it's like, it's, you see what he's, you know what that is? That's like that like halo mm -hmm. of the sun coming through on a film camera that creates that kind of fuzziness. You've never seen that drawn before. He drew it. It works. I would be so curious to hear an Alex Toth critique of like this page. Yeah, he wouldn't be down. Yeah, I'd be curious what he'd criticize. Because, I mean, it's totally different than, than you know, Toth famous for some of his war comics in foliage like this and sh playing with shadows and figures and everything. And it's such a different approach. But, like, I, I look at that and I can't fault that at all. No, of course. You would be happy to draw that way. I would. But Toth would, would certainly talk about the lack of clarity, the lack of readability, that kind of thing. I can see the point in the lack of clarity, but I also think, like, given the subject matter, it's dudes in, you know, shit their pants in the jungle in a war. Like, how clear should it be? Well, that's what I'm saying. Just, like, they're wearing camouflage, so. Oh, wow. Very suitable uh, final end paper. And really speaking to that, like, he's got expression and stuff on these characters' faces that are drawn... So, microscopically. Let's see if we can find that. It is interesting that the end pages are not like one little panel blown up, but like a half page splash. It's because of this shit. Like, dude, Tron, look at that. You see that? And, and you don't pay attention, right? When it's blown up, you see all the gear and it's immaculate. Whenever you were pointing out that uh, village scene and saying, like, I don't know how you draw that at size, I look at this and have that reaction. Right. There's just so much information here. Like, I can't really even take it in yeah. whenever you see it at, presumably, this is your actual original art size. Exactly. But it's so clear it bigger. Like, look at that, dude. The lighting on a button snap. It's not Several even just them. clearer, but, like, this line is flawless. You don't have that thing where, like, oh, the edge of the line is, there's there's some ink bleed. Right. Or, oh, he went over that line twice. It's just this flawlessness. Yeah. Yeah, He's he's extremely tight. He's extremely tight, and I think that he is uh, extremely hard to impress. Pers like, he, like he's he's not. He's How not can't you be? That's, if I this agree. is what you're doing. If you want to impress me, you got to do better than this. Right. I don't know what that would look like. Fantastic, man. It's a pretty nice artist edition. I like this one a lot. Yeah. I love seeing his work in black and white like this. Me too, man. Uh, super stoked, and uh, there it is, guys. You've been. Uh, appraised of this artist edition super happy to have it gonna sit with it uh much longer but i'm good to go if you are jimmy yes K favors like follow subscribe to the youtube channel hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available we put out vids every single day and we have a voluminous amount of uh artist editions that we've gone through uh in a playlist and a, quite a few michael golden videos another playlist uh <laughs> we were we were deciding should it be called uh golden's hour <laughs> <laughs> or uh, I forget what the other one, the other thought was but we've got more than a thousand videos up on the channel as we speak and uh, new videos every day hit the little magnifying glass uh, type in your favorite comics we might have talked about some of your favorites and if we didn't make sure you put some stuff in the comments to let us know what to put at the top of our reading lists for future episodes there's a Patreon for cartoonist kayfabe uh, this is where you mitigate the kayfabe effect books like these they might print a thousand of them they're going to go quick and you want to get in on the ground floor become a king kayfaber you get all the vids before anybody else ultimately the videos are brought to you by the books that we make so jimmy 
tell the people what you have. My next release is going to be Street Angel, Princess of Poverty. This will be out in November from Image Comics. You can start pre-ordering this one now. Let your comic shop know that you need this on your pull list. This will collect all of the Street Angel comics that are not in Street Angel, Deadly Scroll Alive. If you get Princess of Poverty and Deadly Scroll Alive, you'll have a complete collection of all the Street Angel comics that I have made so far. My other books that are available and still in print, The Plain Janes, the first young adult graphic novel, perfect for that young adult reader in your life. The Hulk. Grand Design, my contribution to the Grand Design, celebrating 60 years of the Incredible Hulk. I love how this book turned out, but I believe it's out of print. It's out of uh, the distribution level, which means if your comic shop has a copy and you don't, you want to pick that thing up because it may disappear and be gone for a while. And uh, my latest is True Crime Funnies. This is self-published, three nonfiction stories, including two wrestling stories. You can pick up the PDF on my website. You can read it in its entirety on patreon.com slash jimrug. And I will have reprints for Baltimore. So if you missed it the first time, these will be available again this fall. Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is coming to you in time for the holidays. So I'm trying to see if it catch the hmm. light. Do we catch the light with that gold? Uh, ten- Speaking of Michael Golden. 10th <laughs> uh, anniversary of Hip Hop Family Tree. 50th anniversary of hip hop culture. So we had to do something up special. Uh, this collects all four volumes of Hip Hop Family Tree in one handy dandy collection with over 140 pages of additional material that is not in those first four volumes. Uh, This is the ultimate statement on Hip Hop Family Tree. Uh, The other holiday effort to come out uh, this year, 2023, is the X-Men Grand Design Trilogy trade paperback. Uh, This is the Treasury Edition. Uh, There are three Treasury Editions. Some of those are out of print as we speak. So the way that you'll be able to get your hands on all of my X-Men Grand Design is through the trade paperback coming out in November. Red Room Crypto Killers is uh, the final series of my Red Room comics. Uh, There are two trade paperbacks out now of Red Room. One is called The Antisocial Network. The other is called Trigger Warnings. But this uh, round of Red Room comics called Crypto Killers is uh, the latest, greatest. And uh, in issue three, there is a backup called Latchkey Kids that's going to be important because these are the characters from my daily strip that I'm going to be that I'm putting together. I'm going to start serializing it to everybody online uh, probably January 1st of 2024, but uh, it's called Switchblade Shorties, and I'm serializing uh, the stuff exclusive to my Patreon right now for three bucks uh, to give the early adopters uh, something to check out. These are not the only ways to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Jimmy, let the people know. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, hats, mugs, fanny packs, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. All good ways to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Give them those marching orders and we'll be on our way. Make more comics.